Well, hello there, my brothers and sisters. It's Josh Packard. Welcome to another episode of the Golden Image of Churchianity is a Lie. Thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time, welcome. Um, if it is your first time, I have to catch you up to speed. Um, Christ has done everything. You've never, ever been not reconciled to God. It's always been done. Um, the entire world, for all time, for everything that's ever been created, even the fallen angels and Satan, they don't know it, doesn't do them any good. But as far as for you now, I want to tell you why it doesn't do you any good as long as you don't know it. Okay? So, the reasons you don't know it are pretty simple. There's three, there's three main reasons why you've been deceived. Okay? Okay? The first is the sin that is in you. See, all, all you need to do is to, sep is to separate yourself from God. So, God is your life, okay? God is the source of all life. Everything else is death, right? It's temporal. It will never last without God's uh, providence, His sustaining, everything that He does to keep life together, right? So then what happens is, is that you, if you can be separated from God, you enter this place called death and dying, okay? And um, in here is where death and hell are, in your your experience. So, so like, say if I wanted to murder you, all I'd do is get you to separate from God. That's it. I don't need to use an axe or a gun. I'll just let the consequence of time take its effect and you will die. So, but if I wanted you to live, all I would try to get you to do is reconnect to God, right? Okay. So, somebody with a sinful conscience, and sin doesn't mean like the bad things you do. Sin means that you are less than adequate, that you are naked and you're judging by your own opinions. The evidence that you're judging by your own opinions and that you're subject to your sin, thinking, so like say... Say like a fat person trying to be skinny. Well, the knowledge that they're fat drives them into their being skinny. And so they come to a good outcome being skinny. However, what drove them there was their sin. So it's called the work of sin. So like say if you're you're a Christian today and you're trying to be all goody, goody Christian and you're the best Christian there is. Well, I can look underneath your skirt and go, what drove them here? And it's the thing called sin. So... So no matter what, their works were generated by their sin, even though people around them would say, oh, this person's a good person, and they are holy, and this, and this, and this. Well, likewise, when I see somebody all tatted up, or I see somebody having a sex change operation, or I see people, you know, makeup, or whatever I see on people, um, you know, boob jobs, whatever, it tells on them. So so the, the most condemned usually look the best, like they're... The, the most the ones that are driven by their and they're acutely aware of their inadequacy they really try to be the best or or, or or the leader or the forefront of anything that they're doing so so like say if you you get the most radical the most radical people are usually the ones the most riddled with sin it always is so on either side of it whether you're a Christian and a radical Christian doing the most radical things, or you're a radical sinner being the most radical sinner, no matter what, both both are driven by the sin in them, driving them to achieve the goals that they have set for themselves. Okay? That is completely outside of the, the knowledge of God. It is completely in self-righteousness and pride and absolute delusion. So the entire church system still still looking like it's all good well it's driven by the same sin power that 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 the sinners are driven by okay so then no matter what we'll we'll look at like we say that they, they look like they're at enmity with each other that are fighting with each other and bickering with each other but if you step back and you look at what satan is after and what god is after they both work together to establish uh satan's accusation on the earth so that people are looking at outward observations and looking at uh, professions and works and their efforts and what, what words they've said and what professions they've made and blah, 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 down the line. Well, all the while, it was Christ Jesus who died and rose on our behalf. So that everything they're doing denies that it was by the power of God that we've been reconciled. 
that what he says is what we are. So no matter what, whether you're the church or the world, you are the mouthpiece of Satan, advocating for the power of sin to drive people to do their good deeds, pointing out their iniquity like the accuser does, which the church calls you a sinner. So in order to call you a sinner, they got to point out your, your, your deeds that call you a sinner, right? But not the pastors and not the elders in the churches. Now, they're saints because they did X, Y, Z. They professed, they've been in the church, they were baptized correctly, whatever it is. So everything is on this, this slide rule scale uh, based upon nothing but lies and false currency. So we come over to, to God's side of things. So do we believe what God says or do we believe what we say? That is, that is the, the problem that, that even beginning with Satan, with Adam and Eve, whenever Adam and Eve covered themselves, God said, who told you were naked? God never told them they were naked. They told themselves. And in doing so, they denied God. So then today you look in the church system and those that are humble according to the church system, oh, we're just sinners saved by grace. None of us will be perfect until we cross Jordan. Oh, it's impossible to be perfect. Oh, there's none perfect but Jesus alone. <clears throat> well, then let's hear what Jesus has to say. Well, Jesus says that we are perfect and entire, lacking in nothing, holy without blame before him in love because he himself has paid our sins and our transgressions. He's made the atonement. He's made the sacrifice. Everything was on him, by him, for him, and through him. What he says goes. So your humility towards men absolutely blasphemes the name of God. You are a murderer, each and every one of you. You know, and I can tell, I can show you again real quickly how did I can tell you're a carnal Christian. Hitler saved. What do you say about that? Well, oh, all these, well, he didn't repent. He didn't quit. He didn't ask God for forgiveness. He didn't, da, 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 look at those things he did. Well, you know what? It's true. He probably did none of those things. So then how could he be saved, right? Or how could he be reconciled? Well, you're looking at outward observations. You're not pointing to Christ at all. In your judgment right now, you did not point to Jesus, not even one second. So whether I don't like the fact that he is, I mean, according to carnally speaking, on one sense, on the other sense, I like that, that he is, because if he's reconciled, I'm damn sure reconciled, right? Although I'm a murderer in the same fashion as he is because I supported Satan's accusation and the dominion of the world and, and external uh, observations which separated people from God, which means that I was active in separating people from God and pointing them to look at their works. So therefore, I didn't take a hatchet to them. On the other side, though, I did murder them, though be it accidentally. But I did because now I kept them from the very source of life and left them to die. I left them perishing and starving and, die and, and perishing of thirst. I left them out and left them to die. I am just as much to women, children, friends, family, you name it. I mean, I want you to see that anyone who supports the system of the church or the world, they kill their own children. And then yet the church would be against abortion, right? But the thing is that at least that children's just that child's just dying now. You the, all the rest of your congregations is going to die over a hundred years of your absolute lying to them. And uh, don't get me wrong, I am completely anti-abortion. I'm completely, you know what I mean. But I just want you to get your ideas in line because you're just as guilty if we go back to the standard of God, to where God is looking from. There is no difference between you and Hitler. You've done the same thing. So the good news is, is that Christ has died upon our, on our behalf. The reasons why I know you're reconciled, that you're holy without blame before him in love, is that Christ Jesus has, written, has risen, and written it for that matter. But so now that all that is necessary is for you to believe it, that's it. You know, and that's, your belief does not get you into heaven. That's not, you've already been positionally taken there. Christ will never, I mean, your idea of heaven, I mean, you know, because that gets into a whole other story. But what has happened is that all that's necessary for you to do is turn from what you're doing and then reconnect to God. 
and then you reconnect to your life, that's, that's called salvation. So you've been brought into life, quickened unto eternal life. Okay. Okay, that being said, um, <clears throat> this isn't about going to heaven. That's already been accomplished and purchased. It's about reconciling everything, bringing everything back into the reconciliation of God um, in experience. It's already been done. Like us in the ark, we're just waiting on the, the redemption of the purchased possession. But the thing is, is that we're co-laboring with God unto the ministry of reconciliation in order to have that happen. God is putting us as his co-laborers to do this. So get off your ass and let's get to work. Sounds good? Okay. Well, my buddy Doug called me yesterday and, and gave me a nice little bombshell, which is it's really cool. Um, anyway, we were talking about, he called me up and started talking about, because we talk about the cherubim on top of the mercy seat. Well, there's another set of cherubim that overshadow them, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because Doug's, Doug had a really, really good insight on that. And it's corresponding with everything we've been talking about. But he was just reading through it. And he goes, oh, yeah, don't you think this is this? And I go, holy shit, it is. <laughs> it is. It's, it's another picture of, of the transference of life and, and fellowship. That's what the, those big cherubim are doing. And they uphold everything. Like they're, what they're made of, what they're covered with, how they're, they're, they go from w one wingtip touches one wall, then their, their wings come together, touch in the middle, and then they go all the way to the other wall and touch again. And then the gold, everything's overlaid with gold inside and out. It's, it, anyway, when you, when you, we'll, we'll start discussing that in a minute. It's going to kind of remind me of like Terminator 2. You remember like the, the liquid Terminator where it just, you know, it covers everything? Well, um, in a, gold has always been, uh, it, everything in the Holy of Holies is like this super purified gold. It's like everywhere you, everywhere in there is this pure gold. Okay, and that, that's going to also be very, very important for you to consider as we're going along. Just want to tell you the end to see what's happening. Because it, it's going to talk about our fellowship and about how we all come together. So it overshadows the Ark of the Mercies, the Mercy Seat. So we see the, the Mercy Seat, we see the blood shown, we see the Shekinah glory go up. But then there's this, this, this other framework that we're going to take a look at. Okay. But since, and oh, well, the funny thing was, I happened to just read over it right before he called. It was kind of, it was hilarious. Like I just, he was like, oh, God was just telling me, hey, hey, you missed something. <laughs> but anyway, um, <clears throat> but I also want to take this opportunity to talk about Hiram, the king of Tyre. Um, I want to re reiterate to everybody that there is a there is an eternal priesthood called the the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Christ is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, and then we are the kings and priests after that manner. So, all through the Old Testament, there's people. <clears throat> they were not underneath the Levitical law, but they knew God. They they worshipped God. They followed God. They just were not of the Hebrews. They were not in that, um, shall we say, that people. But but God still reserved them to Himself, and they were people that believed Him just the same. However, they were not enjoined under the law, which is really really cool, because because those that were so like Moses, he, he instituted the law, but he did not obey the law. He was underneath the higher law, being the, the, the Melchizedek priesthood. It's like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were not under the Levitical law. Never were they. They were, they were underneath the original priesthood, the one which operated before, during, and after until today and forever, the priesthood of Melchizedek, which was operating concurrently with the law of of. Moses or the Levitical law. But the Levitical law had a start and an end. The end was the day of the cross. See you later. So so that now that law doesn't stand anymore. We have the, the, the law which has the, the greater temple, um, the better sacrifices being made, the better priesthood, the better promises. <coughs> I'm sorry, we have everything now. And so so this Hiram king of Tyre um, is another one of those people that was operating under the order of Melchizedek and not under the Levitical law, but was enjoined unto um, help build the temple, which was a port according to the Levitical law. 
So, um, let's um, let's go talk. Let's talk about it. It's First uh, Kings, um, chapter five, verse one. Okay. And Hiram, the king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon, for he had heard that they anointed him king in the room of his father, for Hiram was ever a lover of David. And Solomon sent to Hiram, saying, You knowest how that David my father could not build a house under the name of the Lord his God, for the wars which were about him under every side, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. Which is really cool. <coughs> Because Jesus has put all of his enemies under his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurrent. You know, just as a little side note, Solomon's name means peaceful. And, and behold, I purpose to build a house under the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son, whom I will set in my throne, uh, or thy throne in thy room, and he shall build a house unto my name. Um, now therefore command thou that they hew me cedar trees out of Lebanon, and my servant, my servants shall be with your servants. So talking about Solomon's servants with Hiram's servants. It's really interesting. It's a picture of something. Um, I believe that's that's the picture of the church, you guys, where the Jews and the Gentiles all in one body performing this work um, and it came to pass when Hiram heard the words of Solomon that he rejoiced greatly and said blessed be the Lord this day which has given unto David a wise son over his great people so again Hiram acknowledging the Lord and this is something that is we really need to see that is the Jews and the Levitical law they were chosen to reveal God, but there were very people knew God already. It wasn't like they they brought a new concept to the earth at all. It's just that God brought that law around in order to illustrate unto us the need for Him, because the world had already become destroyed, like the Canaanites and all that stuff. They were once right, and then they became corrupted in their ways. And God removed them because of their wickedness, not because of the the Hebrews' goodness. Okay. So, um, bu, 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 bu. and Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I've considered the things which you sent to me for, and I will do all thy desire concerning timber of cedar and concerning the timber of fir. Um, and both of those are. Anyway. My servant shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea, and I will convey them by sea and floats unto the place you shall appoint me, and will cause them to be discharged there, and you shall receive them, and you shall accomplish my desire in giving food for my household. And it's it's really cool because it's like he's basically saying, well, we'll work for food. The same food that we're working for. So Hiram gave Solomon cedar trees and fir trees and according to all his desire and solomon solomon gave hiram 20,000 measures of wheat for food to his household and 20 measures of pure oil thus solomon said uh gave solomon to hiram year by year so the the wheat and the oil um that's really really cool because because <clears throat> it's kind of an interesting allusion to the the wheat and the chaff so the wheat has to be unchaffed right and then uh, uh, the oil uh, being the Holy Spirit. Really interesting. Because that will uh, come up again shortly. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I, I'm going to kind of skip forward. You guys are going to have to check this out. But Oh, this. Well, we're not going to skip forward just, just yet. And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon. And they two made a league together. And King Solomon raised a levy out of all Israel. And the levy was 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 a month by courses. A month there in Lebanon and two months at home. And Adoniram was over the, le the levy. Solomon had three score and ten, 70,000 
that bear burdens, and that's really cool. So, and four score a thousand, what's that, 80,000 hewers in the mountains. Besides the chief of Solomon's officers, which were over the work, 300, 3,300, which ruled over the people that wrought in the work. And the king commanded, and they brought great stones, costly stones, and huge stones to lay the foundation of the house. And Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders did hew them and the stone squares, so they, pre they prepared timber and stones to build the house. And that's, that's very interesting. Because you, you see this mixture of Hiram and Solomon's people building this temple. And he, he made this levy, he made a lot of people slaves, which is really, really cool because when you get, you'll see right, right after Solomon, the Israel and Judah split and the people asked that they, they you know, that he released them from their burdens. And he says, nope, I'll make your burdens harder. But it's interesting because these were, these were just like, he made us like a slave labor force. Kind of interesting. Okay. It talks about when he was going to build the house and Okay. Um, this is a very, very important part here. So, so I want to talk to you about that. That's the church building the temple, a picture of it. Later, when you get to Ezra's temple, you're going to see something else. But um, and Ezra's temple is really more because the nobles actually built. Um, so we have the slave, the slave labor building this house. But whenever we get to Ezra's temple, it's not. It's the noblemen themselves. So that's that's something for another day, but that's something for you to keep in mind because <clears throat> that one was a very, very plain temple. This one's a very, very beautiful temple. And that the Ezra's temple is actually more indicative of Christ. And then it was it was made by people that were not skillful in their labor, but God put them to the task anyway. Kind of like us. Interesting. That we're being priests and kings uh, for the purpose of the building of the, the true temple. See, there's some good allusions here in Solomon's temple, but Ezra's temple is actually the most the most amazing. And then, well, was it Ezekiel when he talks about the building of the temple that hadn't been built yet? That one's pretty cool too. But I digress. So then, right here in uh, in First Kings six seven, and the house when it was in building was built of stones made ready before it was brought thither. Brought there. So that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. So there was, it's literally, the stones were literally, everything was built at the quarry, dug out, built, fashioned to the right dimensions, and then brought to be built into the temple. And that's very, very indicative of what is happening with us, is that we were made ready before we are put in. And then... Christ has already attested that we are his temple. So you've been made ready. Otherwise, you couldn't be part of the temple. So Christ had to make you ready before anything. Okay. And then coming down, it's going to talk about how he... He covered it with cedar. He did all this other stuff. Then concerning this house which you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments and learn to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I have spoken unto David my father, or thy father. Um, this is like a, a picture not only to Solomon, but to us as well. It's a, So the one side is the carnal, which we've all grown up using, living, and obeying our own opinions and our own minds and our own ideas of righteousness and our own images. We have not, up until this point, until this truth has been revealed to you, you have not followed God in his statutes. You followed your own. You didn't follow his own ordinances. You followed your own ordinances. You, you didn't follow his judgments. You did your judgments. You didn't walk in his ways. You walked in your ways. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do because you point to another another place besides Jesus. Okay. Um, and he says, I will not dwell I will dwell among my children of Israel, and I will not forsake my people Israel. 
So there's a big stipulation there. So honestly, and I can tell you right now, we've been positionally reconciled. But now there comes the point to where you have to walk the walk. To receive the promises of God, you have to walk in the ways of God. You do it spontaneously because you see the, the glory of Christ. As you see him spontaneously, that will manifest to you. Because you see his greatness, that he reconciled the entire world and all of the fallen beings, everything, whether they be in heaven, on earth, under the earth, and in the sea, they've all been reconciled. From the very beginning, when God sat down and rested on the seventh day, or when he rested on the seventh day, when he, cre- when he rested from everything that he created and made, all those things are very good. We just don't yet see them very good. But God, seeing the end from the beginning, already calls them very good, and that's being you and me too. God doesn't see you like you see yourself. He sees you already perfected. And then that's what he's, he speaks that perfection into you to bring it from you. Anyway, calling those things which be not as though they were in order to bring what he wants from you. Okay. So now, getting to the portion to where uh, Doug and I talked about. And this is great. Because we've been talking about how fellowship is the very transference of life, right? That that when you reconnect to God, now you become a vessel of life. And not only a vessel, you become like a transmitter. Like we're becoming a power grid together. So as we fellowship with God in truth, in a clean conscience, with no conscience of sin, then God is able to, we're able to first reconnect to him because we're not fleeing from him or we're not afraid of him. We're, we're agreeing with his will. And so now that fellowship and, and transference of love and life and, you know, virtue, all that stuff is being transferred through you right now actively. So then you fill up and then all of a sudden we go, so we're, we're staying connected with God, but then we all, we reconnect with another person. It's like, we just, we're like agent Smiths, you know, where you go, you, you know, he, he just re, he fills them. I mean, it's the opposite of Smith, of course, but he just fills them with life and makes a, another one of himself. And that's how we are with Christ is that he, he, his whole purpose was to reconnect us to make him another him. I mean, and literally not like an actual, the, but it's just another, another being with his exact identity and his exact capability and his exact life and duration. I mean, his exact uh, will and nature and and these things. You know, not to say you're going to look just like Jesus. We're all going to look the same. It's it's just that we we take on his attributes. So, and that's kind of like the law of the Nazarites. That's another one we can get into another day. But the law of the Nazarites is bad. I mean, it talks to you about... Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get it out to another day. Remind me, somebody. Okay. <clears throat> and this is interesting. Um, so, and Solomon built the house and finished. And he built the walls of the house within with boards of cedar, with, with the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling. And he covered them on the inside with wood and covered the floor of the house with planks of fir. And he built 20 cubits on the sides of the house, both on the floor and the walls and the boards of cedar. He... he even built them for it within, even for the oracle, even for the most holy place. And this is cool because there is, this is all wood overlaid with gold. Okay. To give us a picture. And the cedar of the house within was carved with knops and open flowers. And all was cedar and there was no stone seen. This is really cool because the other thing that you see the knops and the flowers on um, well, first off was the rod that budded, Aaron's rod. Okay, the second thing is you see the lampstand built after the very image of 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 that uh, that first rod that budded. The lampstand has the knops, the flowers, the seeds, the oil, everything. So the lampstand um, is is made in this very with these things on it. The only other place you see them. Well, now the walls in this place are are. Uh, have the same nature as the rod that budded and as the menorah. So we're looking at something for the production of light here, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Because see, like the Holy Spirit is called the oil, right? We are the wick and the flame is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is processed through us to make light. 
Okay, when we come to the New Testament, you're going to see that you are built as, as, as a stone, a living stone in the house of God. And you see in Revelation where there's no need of light because the light, God, is, God and Jesus are the light of it, right? This is really cool stuff because this is this is literally a light that is emanating from you, okay? That you've been transformed and you've been covered, which is going to be very important here in a minute. The covering, which produces all this, okay? And da, 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 with knops and with open flowers, all was cedar and there was no stone seen. And the oracle he prepared in the house within to set the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the oracle of the forepart was 20 cubits in length and 20 cubits in breadth and 20 cubits in height. There's the cube. When you get, when you get to, uh, when you get to the Holy of Holies in Revelation, it's going to be much, much bigger. But for our, um, for our, I just want you to kind of know that it's this perfect cube. Where even in, in one of the books, Paul talks about how he gives it another dimension, you know. Anyway, it's, it's another really cool idea, um, Speaking, you know, multidimensionally and all that stuff, but, um, uh, but, 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 okay. So 20 cubits height and it overlaid it with pure gold. So covered the altar, which was of cedar. Now, so Solomon overlaid the house within with pure gold and made a partition by the chains of gold before the Oracle. And he overlaid it with gold. The whole house he overlaid with gold until he had finished all the house. Also, the whole altar that was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. And within the oracle, he made two cherubims of olive tree, each ten cubits high. Five cubits was the length of one wing in the, of the cherub, and five cubits the length of the other wing of the cherub. From the uttermost part of the wing unto the uttermost part of the wing were ten cubits. And the other cherubim was ten cubits. Both of the cherubims were of one measure and of one size. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, so it was of the other cherub. And he set the cherubims within the inner house, and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims, so that the wing of the one touched the one wall, and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall, and their wings touched one another in the midst of the house. And he overlaid the cherubims with gold. And he carved all the walls of the house round about with carved figures of cherubims, palm trees, and open flowers within and without. And the floor of the house he overlaid with gold within and without. And the entering of the oracle he made doors of the olive tree, which is the Holy Spirit. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get to this in a second. I want to get too far. Okay. So think about this. And um, think about the verse, how he, out of the two he's made one. And that's where I, I see that. So then... So then once the blood is witnessed, God's Shekinah glory is seen, which we see off the top of the Ark of the Covenant, when it shows from one end to the other end, where, where those two cherubims that are overshadowing the Ark of the Covenant, talks about Christ being the Alpha and the Omega, that everything's bound up in Him. And once we witness that, then we rise with that smoke. Well, so then now we're looking at these other cherubim, and these cherubim are representative of something else. And this is where Doug was like, oh, dude, these, this is what this, the transfers of life. He's like, this is what it's all talking about. And he was all excited, and we talked for a couple hours yesterday. It was really cool. And, and Doug, he gets, every now and then he gets these magical nuggets that he brings forth, which is it's awesome. And uh, anyway, so and especially if you guys see anything like this, if anything comes up to where you say, oh, this is what this means or whatever, let me know because I'm really into this stuff. So... <clears throat> so anyway, um, so think about this, and I, I really think that those two cherubim are going to be the the Jews and the Gentiles, or the Hebrews and the Gentiles, or whatever, being brought into one body, being being the body, and all, everything all in fellowship. So so it's like it's like we witness this individually, then the whole world witnesses, all of everything witnesses. Once, once we witness, it's like, it's for the purpose of everything to witness. Right. And so then now we see that these, these cherubim are, they're, they're covering, they're covered with gold. They touch the walls on either side. Those walls are all covered with gold. And think about the, the gold is like a conduit, a conduit of life. Think about it like a power grid, just like what we've been talking about. And so, <clears throat> that's the, the flow and the transference of fellowship, which brings about the, the, the house, which, so the house itself is just dark inside, right? Until that Shekinah glory appears. 
once that Shekinah glory appears, it like it starts this cycle of of connection, fellowship, which we're taking a part of now. I know many people find it hard to believe, but this is the generation, you guys. The fact that we can see this and wield this power, um, it has not been seen since the foundation, or from the since the apostles at least. Because I, I look around and nobody, everyone's still carnal. To the best of their abilities, they're still carnal. You know, the greatest writers are still carnal. And we get to this place to where now we're going, oh, this is what it means to walk by sight, faith, not by sight. Oh, this is what fellowship means. Oh, this is what, the, we're just like, everything's just being handed to us right now. And then we're employing it to each other. And, and each of you is the evidence that it is happening. Because now all of a sudden, you went from being one way now you all you did was turn and look and you see the truth and then the truth does all the work in your life it does all the work and so you're seeing scriptures like you've never seen before you're seeing everything manifest and opened up your understanding is being is being exploding right now especially you young guys i mean patrick and and rob and um you know you guys are really really young you don't realize the work that we put in i mean to get to this where we're at where we are at you guys just get it like that uh, Kim, you guys, you guys don't realize how, how, what the gift you've been given. I mean, you do, I'm sure to a degree, but, but it's like we struggled and struggled and struggled. I mean, talk to Nick, talk to Doug, talk to, to all these other guys. We struggled and struggled and struggled and, and to get to where we're at, where we went through massive amounts of trials and absolute just destruction in my past to get to where I have this, this understanding, right? Well, the whole thing, you guys just get it like right now. And that is so, I mean, unbelievably cool that you guys just go, you guys just, you're starting right where, so I'm like struggle, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. And finally I see this, I go, oh, here it is, right? And then, and then all I go is, guys, check this out. And then you guys start from here. The stuff, the stuff that you guys are going to see is going to be ridiculous. If you're starting here, this is, where's the end? You guys are, I think this is crazy. I think in this generation, we're going to see the, the everything, everything that, we, that, that all the mysteries we've been waiting to see are going to be revealed. So anyway, so <clears throat> going back. So then we're seeing those cherubim touching wall to wall, right? And then that blood, the, that the gold is everywhere, all around it, inside and out, everywhere. So that, that it's like that gold is all like, um, a perfect conductor. That's all it is. It's it's like the the Holy Spirit being conducted throughout the house. It's in the, the Holy Spirit's in the walls. The cherubim, the peace. You know the the cherubims are in the walls. The 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 flowers are in the walls. The 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 palm trees. I mean, you look at the very doors to come into the Holy of Holies. They're made out of um, uh, olive wood and overlaid with gold, which is again is the Holy Spirit. Everything's pointing to God's operation and to Him doing it all. And then we now, under that knowledge, now spreading that knowledge and all the praise being the vehicle by which everything is being established and the light is being generated. So when we look into, into Revelation, we're going to see that there, it doesn't talk, it's going to talk about the Holy of Holies, but we're not going to see the ark and we're not going to see those two cherubim anymore because that's, again, that's, that's, that's us. That's, that's the principle of how everything is being charged. So when you get into the so in the, think about it this way and, and this is how i see it in the tabernacle inside of the ark of the covenant in the, in the tent you know where there was moving around which is a really good picture of of us anyway but um we see that we see that ark of the covenant well inside of it there was three things there was the the tables of the law there was the rod that budded and the golden jar of manna okay well when you get to solomon's temple there's only one thing in there. So the, the, the rod that budded and the manna have been taken out. But you see more lavers added on the outside. And you, uh, I'm not, well, you do. You see more lavers. You see more burnt offering places. But you also see the manuras. There's more of those. And uh, the tables of showbread are, 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 are multiplied. So there, there's no need for them anymore, the Ark of the Covenant. So then now the only thing that was hidden was the law, which is the most important thing. Okay, so 
so then, so this we're talking about Solomon's temple. When we get up to Ezra's temple, there's no mention of those cherubims either. But then you have the law. The law is found whenever they're like they're like sweeping up in the holy of holies, and all of a sudden they find a, a copy of the law. Interesting. So then, by that point, there is nothing inside of the Ark of the Covenant. It's ready to become uh, obsolete because. Once Christ comes, there's you know before it, before he comes, the ark's gone. But but when Christ comes in the in in the temple that he's building, there's no need for the ark of the covenant because he is the ark, he's the cherubim, he's the building himself, he's everything. And then that's what we're being made a part of. So he was the prototype. We are the next generation. So anyway, the gold is really really interesting because I really really think that that's 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 what we've been talking about is about the transference of fellowship which is being the actual transference of life so think of life like electricity it's like we have this we have this unlimited source of of electricity that we tie back into and then it we tie into it and then we tie into each other and we become like this just power grid and that's what i believe was what what's going on right now and it's going to be for the purpose of that that it's like firing up the temple right now, you know, and I know I always talk about the wheel inside the wheels, you know, in Ezekiel, you know, and again, there was cherubims there too, which, you know, um, which again, it, it's going to translate. Um, but anyway, the wheel inside of the wheels is just like, it's like, it's like God is spinning around us and it's like, we're catching up with God. So we're getting up to speed with him and what's happening. So, what he has done, we're doing in the same manner, and we're as we're as we're as we're connecting to him, we're spinning with him. We're like generators. You know what I mean? It's interesting stuff. I mean, you know, you might be able to see a little bit more, and you might think I'm a crazy kook because I see these things. But um, this this picture of the holy of holies and those cherubim um, and seeing what they are means we're going the right way. So it's, it's so interesting because God reveals. Um, before he, it's like you already know what's going on before you see it in scripture. You see what I mean? I mean, as far as a picture, real, a pictorial representation like this, because you know, I don't most of the time anymore. It's God reveals, and then I see it in scripture to confirm. I don't, I don't see it in, in scripture, and then go to God to confirm it. It's the other way around. He shows me the truth, and then I confirm it in scripture. So, anyways, my brothers and sisters, I went further than I wanted to. Um, I'm so glad to see you guys are like getting it on, on, uh, on that discord. Um, I don't know, just anyone who would like to get on, uh, YouTube live with me, let me know. Um, I would love to, uh, you know, it's Thanksgiving today, but, uh, you know, so I don't know what my schedule is, but the, sometime this weekend we can do it, especially like, you know. I get up early in the morning, like I'm usually up and outside at 4 a.m., even just on a normal day, like today, because I don't need to get up right now, but I'm up, and I, I love getting up, you know, early, so, um, and that's, what, 5 a.m. to the guys that are one hour ahead of me, and then, you know, is that right? Yeah, and then it's 3 a.m. for Nick's side. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> but we, like I said, me and Nick, we bullshit all the time. So um, we can get on anytime we decide to. But anyway, I'd like to talk with, with you guys on there and just to kind of just go over with your experience of how things are going on, you know, and let people see your sense of humor and the, the people you really are. Um, you know, it, what's happening is you guys are, and this is not, and, and it, by any means, uh, it's not a rebuke. It's an, uh, uh, I've just noticed something. You guys are so smart, and you're so eloquent, and you understand the scriptures so well, um, which is great. Uh, and I just, as a suggestion, I would just like to let people know you, let them see you, let them, let them bring down that any anything that would put you up on a on a pedestal. You just you give them. You know, let them know that you're just like them. That there's no, you know, no matter how much knowledge you have, it wasn't because that you're. It's not. It's not your intelligence that is got gained you this knowledge. It's just by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. 
and allowing other people to see that is where your strengths are going to be. You guys are going to be, you guys are just great teachers. You're going to, you're going to do and see things that is going to blow your mind more than you can imagine right now. I mean, if you guys knew the gift you've been given, I mean, it's, you know, we, like I said, we struggled. We, we went through the bullshit. We went through the hard work of the day. And you guys, you guys come in and get your denarius right now. We're like, shit. <laughs> These guys only put in an hour. How come they're getting paid the same as us? No. But that's that's the highest. There could be no one more proud of you than me. That you guys are getting this. That God is seeing it. And, and it. I mean, because it's, you're the epistle. You're my epistle written in your heart. That, that God has ordained me to be a preacher. And the fact that you guys are out replicating it this quickly means God has ordained you to be preachers. I mean, it's just, it's just too funny. It just shows that we're you you've been established as prophets, that you guys are that you're going the right way because you're planting, you, you're what you're planting, you're bringing up the crop which you should be expecting. You know, like talking about was that Hebrews six, because um, you're not you're 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 planting and no thorns and thistles are coming up. Where well, nobody can ever say that you're not pointing directly to Messiah in all things. I mean, the fact that you guys had, first of all, the the courage to to step out of what you know and to because when I stepped in, the water was only up to my ankles, right? When you guys are stepping in, it's water up to your chins. You guys are you guys are coming in when the when the torrent's raging, where where if you you guys had to turn away from a lot more than I had to turn away from, I didn't realize how much I was turning. I mean, I turned away from a lot, and I realized I was turning away from a lot. But through the years, I've seen how much further I've turned away from, how many bigger things I've turned away from, and how much how much God has led me out under. There's no way I should have been able to come out at all, and and you guys are taking a much bigger step than I ever took, because you're going holy shit everything's a lie and then you just went okay fuck it and jumped in i'm just i'm saying you guys are remarkable it's not that you're just it's not that you're just cool and that you you guys are miracles i mean i don't i want you to see that there is nothing what you guys are doing right now is unheard of i mean you just faced the precipice of like of incalculable measure and you said eh, fuck it i'll do it <laughs> i mean anyway i don't want to I, I and i'm saying this just merely to show you how what has been done to you is so powerful that you can't even possibly imagine right now because i i've spent the years you guys preaching to people preaching to people preaching to people and watch people reject 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 or they'll take a part of it or they'll take a little bit and i mean years and years and years and all of a sudden you'll get one that just Bam! You know, and you're like, yeah, and you don't have to worry about them. And then you hear along years and years again, you're preaching, 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 and then bam, another person will get it after a few years. And then they're just still, but they still are just halfway in and out, and you're just like, shit. Well, and that was back when the stuff we knew, I mean, the revelations we had Im immediately, the, 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 I they were so powerful to me, I, had to, I was shaking and I had to leave because I was flipping out because of when I saw what I saw. And that was so minuscule. I mean, compared to what you guys see now, I mean, the stuff that you see now is, I mean, a hundred thousand times more unbelievable than what I saw. It's taken me all this time to understand what we see today. And you guys just went, what? I got it. <laughs> You're like, holy shit. I mean, I just, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but I want you guys to know you guys are a bigger miracle than anyone up to this point yet. You have, you have traversed over the darkness. You have translated further than anyone yet. I mean, you guys went from dead. So you went from, I went from dead to alive. And I'm like, oh yeah, awesome. And I'm all boop, doo, 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 and overcoming all this crap and going through all these things and doing all this stuff. And then I finally get to this place. I'm like, oh, whew, I can rest again. Oh, where'd you guys come from? <laughs> How'd you guys?
guys get here? You know what I mean? And it, it, it's so amazing to me. It is such a fulfillment. Uh, and, and, and I mean, it, it, it's an answer to like questions that God is, that I've asked God and asked God and asked God. You guys don't, you guys don't understand that you've blessed me more than you could ever know. Because, like Rob's always saying that, I mean, everyone came after me. Everyone told me, and I, everyone told me I was a liar, false prophet. Everyone. I mean, you guys, it's just funny. And then you guys just come along and go, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's easy. Look at this, easy, easy, easy. You know, and watching you, Patrick, your mastery and understanding, I mean, you know what I mean? It's, you don't realize, the, the mastery and understanding you have, people could study their entire life ceaselessly and never come to the attainment of the understanding that you have right now. Okay? There's just, there's no way that you could have ever came to this on your own. And it's, it's just so cool to see you just go, oh yeah, there it is, and go. You know, everybody, you know, and everybody's remarkable. But I'm just gonna, I'm calling you out, Patrick, because I think you're, 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 as far as teaching is going, you're, you're a badass. Um, and uh, and you're so young, 25. Nick was saying you're 25, dude. That's freaking amazing. I didn't even come into the Lord till I was 28. I was an atheist idiot up until I was 28, and that was many, many years ago. And you're 25, dude. Just coming and starting with this full knowledge, dude. I'm anyway. I'm proud of you guys. You know, and everybody too. I mean, definitely. You know, Rob, you're you're tearing it up. And uh, you know. Anyway, you guys are just doing so great. I, I mean, I, I just I just want to reiterate to you that how what you guys the knowledge you have it, it's a miracle in itself. I mean, beyond. You've you've stepped. You don't realize how far you translated. You know what I mean? It's like here's the deception of the world. I translated to here, then I worked, 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 and you guys went boop in one second. And I just that is a fulfillment of prayer. It's a fulfillment of miracles. It's it's a fulfillment of God's promises. It's it's showing that we're going the right direction. It's showing that we were we were we we're not teaching a lie, and you guys are the evidence of that. So, um, anyway, uh, I, you guys are great. I talked to Pat uh, Pat Golden on the phone the other day. He's a cool dude. You know, he's he's you know he's more my age. You know, probably maybe a little older, but he's cooler than shit. And uh, you know, if you guys ever want to chat, I'll give you my phone number. We just got to do it over the. Uh, we got to do it over my email because I got stalkers. So they always, and it's not like I'm afraid. I mean, they'll just keep blowing up my phone, going to different phones, calling me like a thousand times a day. And I'm like, oh God, and, you know. So I have to get rid of my phone, get a new phone, or get rid of my phone number, get a new phone number. And it, it goes through the whole thing. It's just a pain in the ass. <clears throat> so, so anyway, um, Probably not ladies though. I, I can't. I can't talk with women over the phone. Um, you know, I had talked to my wife, so she's my wife's pretty jealous, which is kind of cool. I know, whatever. But anyway, you guys, uh, God bless you, and uh, have a wonderful day. And I'm just so proud of you all, and how I'm just blown away more by God and His grace and His. And the, and the power of his revelation according to the Holy Spirit that we all see the same thing at the same time regardless of how new or old you are we I can't go beyond you you can't go beyond me we we all have to bring each other and this is how it's happening through this fellowship of life and about us acknowledging God and, and acknowledging his victory in absolutely everything that we walk by faith not by sight all right, my brethren, have a great day. Love you all, and uh, I'll try to get together with you guys more on Discord. Later.